This is Steam's chat interface, and it is truly, truly awful. It makes sense that Steam would have some sort of chat add-on, but why does it have to be so bad? Today, we're gonna redesign it so that you can see what it really should look like if someone put some love and tender care into the Steam chat app. I know I'm memeing a bit here, but let's get specific. First of all, the visual hierarchy is totally bonkers. My attention's being pulled all over the place, uh, pulled to different colors, and things are just grouped in very weird, inorganic ways. There's inconsistent treatments all over the place for section labels and groups. And if I want to have a conversation with someone, I have to open three separate windows to do that. Why? 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 First, we'll tackle colors and typography, the most important part. Then we'll get a simple wireframe together and finally design it all in Figma. Let's get going. Since this is a redesign, I just took a screenshot of the chat UI and then sampled various colors from the interface itself. Then I went to tint and shade generator and broadened the palette a little bit. For typography, I decided to go with Poppins because it gives that kind of modern interface feel, uh, but it's also a little more friendly and it doesn't necessarily feel as cold as, say, Open Sans or something really generic. Then in order to move to the next step, I had to create a ranked list of user stories. I'm not going to read them out to you, but these are what I would imagine someone would want to do in this interface if they're trying to chat with a friend. So after getting the basics down, colors, typography, and user stories, I sat down for about 30 minutes and put together a simple wireframe. This is how I'm expecting to arrange all the components on the UI um, so that they make sense before fleshing out the details of how they look and feel. And now specifically the main problem I'm solving here is that three chat container problem that we just discussed. And I wanted to find a way to give users a way to uh, have both a list of their friends, but then have conversations with one friend and then be able to know if they have a pending message from someone else and quickly bounce back and forth between various different friends and conversations. And initially I was considering adding tabs up here um, with like friend one and friend two, but that looked a little bit clunky and felt very overwhelming. I was kind of just packing way too much into this space here. So instead, what I arrived on uh, was just kind of having an extra pop-out UI, this thing here, that kind of represents a single conversation. Anytime you would click on an individual conversation here, it would pop out this sidebar and kind of show you what's been happening in that conversation. It shows you all your chat history. And this has a lot of benefits because it gives you a lot more space to show the conversation, which is really necessary for something like this. And it also gives you room up here for metadata and uh, contextual actions if you want to, say, block someone that's annoying you. Also wanted to give the user a mechanism to swap between contexts here. Uh, we've got friends and groups. And within friends, you're talking with individual friends. Within groups, you're talking in group chats with potentially multiple friends at once. Um, but then I also thought it would also make sense to give them a folders option to create groups of friends, which are meaningfully different from chat groups um, in the sense that you're not chatting with multiple people at once. It's just a way to organize all the individual people you're chatting with. Uh, but these are meaningfully different contexts, so the segmentation UI makes a lot of sense. And then finally, if you want to add a new friend in the existing UI, you have to go to the side of the search bar and click a very tiny icon. And that felt a little inappropriate for what should normally be a meaningful action. Adding a new friend is a big deal. And for, I guess, properly socialized folks, <laughs> that should happen relatively often. So putting it in the sidebar doesn't make sense. Instead, we put it way down here, um, right at the bottom, as kind of the primary action for this list. If you're going to mutate the list in some way, this is the button that you click, you add a new friend to the list. So now that we have the blueprint or the structure of the UI, let's jump right into Figma and start making this thing real. The first major philosophical change that we're making here is we're just forcing the social menu to be a persistent part of the UI. Instead of being able to dismiss it, like in the current Steam app, it just stays there forever. And I think this makes sense because the social component of Steam is kind of fundamental to the whole thing. I guess you could just use it as a games library, but um, where do you get your game recommendations? Most of 
the time is from other people. And how do you play those games with other people? Well, you do it through the Steam chat interface. It's a fundamental part of the UI, so it's no longer collapsible. But now that we've agreed on that, we need to build out kind of the main profile area. This is the region of the screen that is responsible for indicating my personal status as the active user and letting me control my account settings. So the top right is kind of the heuristic we've established for where that kind of stuff's gonna live. We'll put it there in the new UI as well. Now I want to be more intentional with the visual hierarchy in this UI. I wanna use color and opacity to draw people's attention in the following way. Uh, first, I want to pull people's attention to those that are actively playing games, and then people that are online and have had some activity recently, then people that are online but have been away for a couple of minutes or hours, and then finally, people that are offline. I don't really want to be pulling attention there. So we'll play around with a mix of color and opacity to generate that very specific hierarchy. We'll also separate the contacts into those groups so they're easier to look through when you're using that UI in the future. Uh, for example, I have coworkers that I play games with, I have WoW friends, I have just high school friends, so having them organized helps me keep track of these esoteric names that are often hard to remember. Quick side note here, I'm using an app called Content Reel, uh, which is a free Figma plugin to generate the profile images for people in the UI here. Uh, Content Reel really, really, really helps if you want to make your UI feel much more uh, like an, an actual app. Oftentimes, I fall into the trap of using templated content, and templated content can sometimes make your UI look good when otherwise it wouldn't because you're not dealing with very, very long strings or awkward images that people get to choose on their own. So definitely check out Content Reel if you're uh, designing a real interface in Figma. Now that we've got the list more or less sorted, we need a way to amend that list. So we're going to add the button for creating a new friend to the bottom of this UI and uh, style it in such a way that it appears to be floating on top of the ever-growing list of friends above it. And we'll use this little dark gradient to indicate that it is floating on top of a larger list below. Now, I also wanted to make it really stupid easy to join your friend in a game if you find that they're playing something that you want to play. So if someone's deep in a game of Pal World and you're on the same server, you want to just like get in there ASAP. So we can let the user do that through the hover state. Um, and the reason we can get away with putting it in the hover state is because when you want to interact with someone, the first thing you'll do is probably move your mouse over. And when you move the mouse over, the action presents itself. You can just immediately click that join button. I think this is a solid treatment. But now that we've got the list more or less sorted, um, we need to figure out how we're going to build a chat interface and integrate it with this in a way that actually makes sense. So clicking on an individual username in this sidebar will pop open a dedicated chat UI, which we're gonna start building now. And I really found that this was quite a challenge to build until I looked at lots of reference material and found that if you want to have like a sensible list of messages, um, oftentimes they're grouped by kind of a message session. So when you think about texting someone, right, you're not always constantly texting them. You'll kind of text them three or four things, then wait four hours, then text them one thing, and then wait a day or two, then text them three or four things, right? It's broken up into chunks. So we can mimic that same sort of behavior in the UI by listing the time for that session above a series of messages and then separating them with some space. I think this really does a lot to imply that you're looking at a chat history and it helps with readability as well because you can scroll back through historical chat sessions as opposed to just an enormous list of messages. In the existing UI, if you want to add an emoji or something, you have to click a specific button in the Steam UI. And it really felt unnecessary, so I'm bundling everything into a little plus icon uh, next to the placeholder text for the chat message box itself. And users can add emojis and uh, files or images through that contextual control. Now, we'll also have shortcuts in the UI to do this, but I figured combining everything just saves a lot more of that horizontal real estate and doesn't distract me with unnecessary iconography. And for veterans of the channel, you know that I've redesigned the Steam store itself before, so I took another stab at it and pulled over my old UI, polished it up, added in the brand guidelines for the new chat, and I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, it looks even better now that I've added this very slick gradient. And that's it. Hope you found something useful in this one, folks. And uh, please, Steam, just steal this. Just take it. Embrace the 21st century and polish up your UI. Have a good one, folks.